Hey everybody, welcome back to day two, Breakfast with Bob from Xterra Oak Mountain. My name is Bob Babbitt, we're brought to you by Master Spas, as fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, the original triathlon brand, Premium Plus Sports, and of course our Challenge Athletes Foundation, two-time champion here at Xterra Oak Mountain, Mr. Sam Osborne joins us. How you doing, Sam? I'm great, Bob, and um, look, it's good to see you. Um, welcome to the dark side of triathlon. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. And so you've won this race twice, and the other Sam has only won it once. Is that true? That is true, yeah. yes. Um, so you have bragging rights, big time. I, I guess you could say that, yeah. <laughs> um, look, I just love the course here in Oak Mountain. What, um, what is it about this course here? Um, look, there's a lot of pine forest in here, um, which is really similar to home. Um, we, we ride on tree roots all the time at right. home. Um, and I just think, look, it's a true exterior course. Um, to me, Xterra is the person with the biggest engine um, with the best skill set that should win. Right. Um, and I think this course really rewards somebody um, who can handle a mountain bike. It's not, you know, outrageously technical, um, but there's a lot of real power stuff and there's so many twists and turns in here that if you can hold speed, you know, um, right. around all these corners, you're in for a really big advantage. Um, so I just think it's, it's a true test of what Xterra Triathlon is. Uh, and, and people have been just talking about all the single track, single track in the bike, single track in the run. Does it make it tough to catch up on the bike when you're, when there's that much single track? Um, yeah, look, m moving past people can be really challenging. Um, but you, you'll always be surprised how much space there is on single trail. Right. Um, sometimes it's not always clean, um, to, to get past somebody, but th there's always space if you're willing to make it. Um, and there's lots of Euros here and they race a very different style. Right. Um, they'll find space. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it's nice to have the Europeans here because it, 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 this race didn't necessarily draw a lot of Europeans in the past. Yeah, look, um, I guess they're a little bit scared, eh, to leave mummy and daddy, so, um, oh! get on a plane and <laughs> actually travel across the world. Um, Which you guys do all the If you're in New Zealand, you're, you have to travel. Yeah, Australia, right? well, we don't have a choice, you know, like we're at the bottom of the world. Um, right. We want to go and race, you know, or make, make triathlon, make I think. Yeah. Um, we've got to get on a jet and we've got to pack up our, essentially our lives um, for six months of the year and go after it. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think for us, I don't know, it's been life forever since I was a junior. I was um, going to say, that's really the, your whole life since you've been. Now, you start out in juniors in the road try. Correct, yeah. I raced ITU for a long time, a um, little bit of Bundesliga. Oh, Bundesliga um, yeah. too. That's fun racing. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was a really good pathway. You know, the Bundesliga is really brutal racing. Um, you have like over 100 guys on a start line for a sprint distance race um, from the very, very best because, yes. you know, the top teams, they pay enough money that the best guys turn up. Um, but it's a good pathway because even if you're having a bad day, you know, there's still a lot of people at the back end. You right. just have a really, really solid day no matter yes. where you're at. Um, I think it's just a good pathway to, to progress in the sport. When you first got into the sport, was the idea to go to the Olympics? Yeah, I think, I think it's every child's dream right. you know, to go to the Olympics. Um, my swim's probably not strong enough mm. um, for the ITU format, which is really bizarre when you, when you come across to, you know, like Xterra, you're considered a good swimmer. Uh, uh, isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the swimming level in ITU is just that high. Oh, my God. Um, you're, you're basically a world-class swimmer. Exactly. Guys, Andy Potts and guys like that who are collegiate, hot, top level collegiate swimmers coming into the sport. Yeah, um, it, it's mind blowing how fast they are um, in that sport. But I, I think Xterra, maybe it's changed because um, the mountain bike means so much. You right. know, it's a whole other skill set. I mean, triathlon's a hard skill set on its own, swim bike run. Um, then you throw in the technical element of mountain biking. Right. It makes it really challenging um, to do all three. So I think you see a lot more like ex-professional mountain bikers coming across. Yes. Um, because it's easier for them to pick up swimming than a normal triathlete but to pick up it, mountain biking. And it's funny because it, it, it's very difficult. Somebody comes in as a roadie in, in cycling, you, know, you get very few cam wharfs who come in as, who are roadies and can swim. And, 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 if, and from, the, from the road try side, trying to make up the ground in the swim on the bike is very difficult. Yeah. This is, this is just different. This is different, yeah. Um, and it's pretty crazy, like you see some of these professional mountain bikers come across and they might lose five minutes in the swim, you know, yes. if, if that happened on the road, yeah, it's You're game done. over, there's no coming there's back. No coming back. But they just are that powerful on the bike and their skill set is that high that you'd be surprised they come across. Um, and for some reason, a strong mountain biker usually m makes a strong trail runner. Exactly. Yeah, isn't that funny? You'd figure that if somebody comes from a bike cycling background, not necessarily a runner, 
but it seems like a lot of these guys have immediately become really, really good runners as well. Yeah, I, look, I wonder if it's the strength component from the mountain biking. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if you chuck them on a 10K road race, they wouldn't run anything terribly amazing. Right. Um, but we don't run 10K on the road. We're running 10K on the trails. Um, right. So it's a completely different, different game. So you just did the inaugural off-road Xterra uh, Dunsboro and won that. And wait, that was your 21st win. First out of the water, and oh, by the way, you got bumped by a kangaroo during the bike? What yeah, the it's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Australia, you know, they got snakes and they got spiders, but I didn't expect to, a kangaroo to hit me mid-race. Um, it, it's a really cool course there, but, but it winds yeah. similar to here, but maybe just a little bit more technical, and it winds everywhere, and kind of out the corner of my eye, I saw, I saw this kangaroo there. <laughs> And I thought, man, he's pretty close. And then next minute, the thing's jumping into me. Um, and it smacked me mid-race. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? He knocked you off your bike? He didn't knock me off my bike, thankfully. Um, it was a smaller one. I think a big <laughs> one, that would have been game over for me. Because um, yeah. I know there's some bad accidents over there with kangaroos. Yes. Um, but it was just one of those, what the hell just happened to me kind of moments. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you finish the bike and you go, yeah, I would have gone faster if I got hit by a kangaroo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, it. I you mean, always have that story. That's pretty cool. It is a pretty funny story. I mean, Benny, Benny Allen was racing that day, the Aussie. Um, and Did he see it? He didn't see it, actually. Um, he was just, it must have been really, really close because he wasn't that far behind. And, you know, they said, oh, you know, people talk about letting the hounds out. And Aussie, they let the ruse out. <laughs> <laughs> So you had the fastest run in bike times of the day, three minutes ahead of second. That's, that's a good way to start the season. Yeah, look, it, it was solid. Um, it, was, it was a good building block. It's, it's kind of challenging, you know, where, when you're coming from the Southern Hemisphere because essentially you just have double summer, right? You race right. all year round. Um, so definitely eyes on later in the year, but it's promising signs, I think, for, you know, in Australia. So since you won here in 2019 and there wasn't a race here in 20, and I don't think there was a race last year here in 2022, and you won in 2021, so you're two-time defending champion. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, because there wasn't a race in 20 or 22, so two-time defending champion here. So you, the target's on your back for this race. Yeah, it's funny. I, I don't feel like it is, but, I mean, yeah, like you say, I've won it the last two editions, so, um, yeah, maybe it is. Um, there was a, in 2000 and uh, 2019... I look at 2019 and I'm like, oh my God, look at every, you won everything, right? You were second Asia Pacific champs. Uh, you won uh, Oak Mountain, right? You win uh, Brazil, New Zealand, Victoria, Mexico, Pan Am champ. That, what was it about that season? I don't know. We were just, you know, we're in Boulder. We're in a really, really good place. Yeah. Uh, training was going well. And I don't know, sometimes you get those seasons where it just feels like you can't make a mistake. You know, any, right. anything you touch just seems to work for you. Yes. Um, you know, all these races, they, they play it out all completely different ways. Um, but I don't know, it was just one of those things. Everything really clicked. Um, and hence, you know, why I'm back in Boulder this year. Um, us, yeah. I think it's just where I'm happiest. I love Boulder. We've got a really good training group there. Um, and I'm like, why not replicate, you know, the success that I had in 2019? And you have a season like that in 19, and the whole world shuts down in 2020. So I'm sure you were like heading into 2020 going, last year was great, this next year's gonna be even better. And that, they were talking about starting this the, the world tour, right? They are gonna start a World Cup series, was gonna start in 2020, and then everything gets shut down. And the, you guys were, I think, fortunate you could still train and have local stuff happening, but how hard was it to be, to not be able to travel the world? Yeah, we were pretty unique, you know, in New Zealand. Um because we kind of felt like COVID didn't exist for a really, really long time. We were just in right. our little bubble. Um, even in lockdown, look, we, we live so close to the forest. We just mountain biked right. all the time, all through lockdown. Um, and you didn't have the travel. You didn't have the, the recovery. So you were basically, you could just do this amazing, what, two-year block of training. The training, yeah. Um, <laughs> and thankfully, we still had events, you know, like we've, we've got a big um, mountain bike marathon race in New Zealand. The, that still happened during that, COVID. That still happened during COVID. They call it the Walker 100. Um, yeah. And it's at a really bad time, for me, at a bad time. Every year, I always miss it. And I'm like, this is my one opportunity that I can actually hit this race. Um, so it was really cool. I essentially did like a world champs build for a mountain bike race. Um, and how'd you do? Uh, I got third actually. That's um, pretty cool in a straight mountain bike race. In yeah. a straight mountain bike race against you know guys oh, that race the World Cups. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. 
but like I said, it was a world, world champs build for you know that specific race, um, which probably people don't realise. I think back home. Yes. Um, but it was just you know my probably one opportunity to actually hit that race full noise, um, and I'm really happy I actually got to do that. That's so cool. And then 2021, another great year where you get uh, what Rotorua, Oak Mountain, Beaver Creek, U.S. Champs in Utah. You win all four of those. That's and the the two of you guys together winning all four of those. All four, yeah, yeah. We had an unbelievable year. Um, I'm not sure if it was the pressure. Like we we were in this unknown when we left New Zealand. Right. Um, you know, we knew that we couldn't get back into New Zealand. We didn't really That's know scary. what the state of the world was at yeah, that time. Yeah. Um, so we're like, what do we do? Do we go and blow all this coin, come to America and set up for the year to potentially the season gets canned? at that point, canned? we weren't sure if races were coming back. Yeah. No, we had no idea. And then we were just absolutely packing ourselves. Eh? We, this was the first race we came to here in Alabama. And they were doing COVID testing. And we we're like, we've just traveled all the way from New Zealand. What if we've picked up COVID somewhere along the way? We yeah. turn up here and we can't race. Like that's a lot of thousands of dollars down the drain um but thankfully you know all the racing went ahead we had an amazing year um you know we won you know all the races yes which was really really cool um and we were just so heartbroken you know our visas didn't allow us to stay in america long enough right um and then new zealand had this this miq thing where you had to spend two weeks in a hotel um and you had to book yes. this slot so we tried a lot to try and get a slot in the in the hotel so we could go and race worlds. Yes. Um, couldn't yeah, do it. We couldn't do it. We just couldn't make the now trip happen. Have you happen. raced worlds? I have. I've raced. Um, I raced Maui a lot of times. I've had I think a ninth, a sixth, a third, right, and a fourth in that order. Right. Um, so you're getting better. <laughs> I was getting better until I got a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> the the progression was meant to go first right yeah, after that year. Fourth, yeah. Third, <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, but that I, would have been the year. Well, you know, you can't think about what nope. ifs, right? Um, you know, I just got to focus on trying to get back onto that top step this year. Right, uh, exactly. And and so the, we were we were talking to Sam before, and basically, you guys will will live in Colorado. You'll stay in Boulder and not be traveling back and forth to Europe. And then in the meantime, you're going to do some some road. Yeah, we. I don't know. The roads kind of pricked our curiosity. Um, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I always thought it was really, really boring. Um, you know, you sit in some Euro bars for 90K and you don't do much else. Um, right. But I picked up a TT bike just because, you know, COVID, there weren't as many racing opportunities in New Zealand. And then I'm like, oh, it's not as boring as what I thought. Um, there's a lot more, that, you know, that well, happens within the racing. race. Yeah, yeah I mean, you actually race. guys around, yes. And um, I think that you just crave the racing. Like, we love to race. Um, we come it's from best. New Zealand. We race all year round. Yeah. We don't have, you know, like four months off, five months right, off. Right, right. Like the rest of the, these guys in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so we just get a kick out of racing. It's like a bad addiction. It's, it's you know what I did the same thing. Like in 2019, I raced 36 times, something like that. I just love being the social part. Just being with all these guys in the transition area is, is really fun. It is, yeah. Um, and I guess it's essentially your friend group, right? These guys totally. are the people you train with. You see at races all the time. Yep. Um, it is social, and I don't know. Do you get a, a really big buzz off the adrenaline kick of a race? Or yes, you do. <laughs> it, I, I actually do think it's a bit of an addiction, eh? <laughs> oh, there's no question about it. Yeah, we have a, in our group. It's we're in the 70 to death category, <laughs> so it's fun to see these guys every every week and just you know just just talk story. That's the best thing there is. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter how you do. It's just getting out there and racing. Now you guys are making a living doing this. Do you, are you feeling good about where Xterra is at now in terms of the whole World Cup situation and now we've got um, a short track, a lot of fun stuff happening? Yeah, look, I think that the change is positive for Xterra. Yeah. Um, the World Cup something that we've wanted for a long time. Um, we're not chasing it fully this year. Right. Um, I think while it's something that we've always pushed for, the rollout of it this year has kind of missed the mark. Mm -hmm. um, Essentially, you know, to, to pull it off properly, there's a lot of travel. I think there's four international yeah. flights. Yeah. Um, and even if you probably win the tour, you're barely breaking even. Um, so he, hence why we're not. And we're, right. and we're mixing, staying in America, and we're mixing in some half Ironmans um, because we just think that's more feasible exactly. and a better way to do it. Yeah. And so you potentially could end up in Finland, 70.3 worlds. You know? Well, who knows? Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a funny story. Uh, well, not that funny <laughs> at the time. Um, but I probably had two really good opportunities in Melbourne and um, 70.3 New Zealand to get my Finland slot. Um, yeah. 
but I'm obviously green to the half Ironmans and things didn't go as planned. Um, What'd you do? Uh, well, I got a penalty at both of them, um, <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, Melbourne, I, I 100% to this day believe it was really unjustified. Um, oh, drafting call? It was a drafting call. Um, just the dynamics of the race, I think. Yes. Um, essentially, everybody should have been given one um, right. in that group. Talpo was, I mean, I can own it. It was my fault. I just didn't understand the rule, um, and what I did something. Like? So I, I got passed on the bike there. Um, and he obviously surged pretty hard. Right. And then he, he came off. Right. And then I drifted back into the zone when I guess he stopped riding really, really hard. Yeah. And I just thought it was okay to drop out of it. But right. the, the draft marshal was sitting right behind me. And he says you have to go past him. And you have to go all the way past where Which I just I've dropped out. I've never been a fan about that. Because um, real, realistically to force somebody in a lot of times, what if there's three guys there? You got to pass them all. Yeah. That's just not realistic. Exactly. And it, like, I, I didn't know. I, he stopped at, actually at the penalty box with me and he said to me, um, I guess to make sure that I stopped and I said like please tell me like I don't well, I understand do. what what I've done wrong like I'm not trying you know to be yeah. difficult here but I don't understand like just please yeah, yeah. educate me um, instead of just giving me five minutes you know yes. I need to learn from this um, and five minutes in a 70.3 is basically a death sentence yeah it's game it's over right um, it should be one or two minutes max but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's uh, about yeah, again that's what makes you come when you come to Xterra. <laughs> you have to worry about that type of crap. Yeah, I mean, look, we're used to racing bar to bar, you know, in Xterra. Absolutely. Um, and I guess the 70.3 is like a gentleman's game, you know, almost. Right. Um, it's a little different. But thankfully, we've had a race ranger came, come in in New Zealand. I love it's that. a New Zealand product. Um, and, you know, James and Dylan are doing a really, really good job with it. Um, and we had that for essentially all New Zealand races after that. Um, and it's an absolute game changer. Totally. It just takes all the ambiguity out of it. Does it make a beep to let you know you're too close? Uh, it just lights up. Um, oh, okay. So you, you've got three lights, essentially. One is when you get in range of the radar. Right. Another one is when you're about to go into the zone. Yes. Um, and then the next one, the last light, it goes blue when you're in the zone. Okay. Um, and it's just easy, you know. If you see the blue light, well, you better go and pass. Right. Um, and it's just so black and white. I like that. And it's amazing, you know, like every race we've done that we've had Race Ranger in, there's been no penalties. Um, I, I, and I truly don't believe people are trying to race dishonestly. I don't think they are. Um, I agree. That you're just getting, well, probably on both sides, on the wrong side exactly. of, um, you know, I guess some human error or some yeah. human calls that aren't always accurate. Um, but it's just cool to have technology like that that essentially cleans up the racing. It is Everyone like, knows where they stand. Long, long overdue. It is. Something could come up with years yeah. and years. And it's a New Zealand product, so obviously it's yeah, amazing. Well, it's, got <laughs> it's very cool. Sam, thanks so much for taking time. Always a pleasure to catch up with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you guys have a, a pretty full schedule this year. You're going to be racing a lot. Yeah. No, we look forward to it. Thanks for um, having us on. Good to see you again. Mr. Sam Osborne has been our guest, everybody, again. Day two, Breakfast of Bob from Exterra Oak Mountain. Hold on. We will be right back.